Hello, welcome to the Ineffable Elves. Welcome to another video in the series talking about different celebrities. And today I would like to explore someone who meant a lot to me in my early teens and then went more or less under the radar in my consciousness and recently has come back. And this is Johnny Borrell. Johnny Burrell of the band Razorlight and I say this now as he has just he's in his 42nd year so this is his Uranus opposition and he's releasing a new album and he has supposedly <laughs> grown and developed and also it's a reflection of our desire to look again at the, the noughties, as they're now called, the, my formative years. I feel now very blessed that he was my, my pin-up of my early, my tweenies. Because he's actually turned out to be a very talented musician and I actually have been, I spent the last week listening to his back catalogue and his more um, obscure music and I really enjoy it, it's very interesting. And there's been like a full circle made between little 13, 14 year old me and today in relation to him and learning about his journey and his story. He is going to be my archetypal exploration of an Aries, it has to be, and I would like to address how we feel collectively about this type of archetype. I have already done a video about Donovan and there's this Taurus energy, this very soft and kind of loving, comfortable energy. There's something more jagged and more in your face about Johnny Borrell. So I'm going to explore more about his chart. So if I'm looking down it's because I've got his chart in front of me. And I also just wanted to explore the nature of the front man in general and men on a stage <laughs> and what that does to the female heart and why that has been such a prevalent feature of the last 70 years, you know, since the stages became higher and the music became more, more and more amplified. All I can say is that I Love Johnny Burrell was my YouTube handle. <laughs> from my first YouTube account that I set up in 2006. What can I say? And there'll be a friend watching this now and I know she's laughing her head off that I'm addressing this person because when I was 13, this character, this, this figurehead, you know, I didn't come from any kind of religious background but it kind of became like a, a Jesus for me. It elicited the same kind of feelings that I then saw in videos of when the Beatle mania was happening and girls were screaming. And I've read a few articles recently from Psychology Today and they are very limited in their understanding of what that actually is, <laughs> what that really means. And there's a kind of like, oh, there's a fever, there's a fervor, there's an excitement, all the girls together, they all start screaming and then it all builds up, everybody bounces off of each other. But you look at their faces and there's this desperation there's this like just collapsing weakness and just feeling of 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 yet yeah, absolute utter desperation and a few things happened for me i never went to a razor light concert there was something in me that just felt like because this was some sort of unrequited love i could never have that even though i lived in london very very possible to go and see him play but there was like a distance. And I also saw a video recently of a fan meeting Lana Del Rey and just crying and crying and crying and crying and the emotions coming out. And I see how these pinups really relate back to our parents. And this came at a point for me when my dad had just rejected me and stopped talking to me as I was entering puberty. <laughs> and then I've got this shiny figurehead who wants to be looked at. That's the other thing about these these pinups, these rock stars, is that they want the attention. And I'd also just seen the film Tommy, the rock opera from 1975, which incidentally was released at a moment when Jupiter was conjunct the sun in Aries. So there's this huge emphasis on fire, and fire is this very masculine energy, and it's this energy that is unavoidable, unignorable, and Roger Daltrey was the Johnny Burrell of that moment, and he 
emphasizes the Leo complex, as all rock stars did at that time, having Pluto in Leo, but he also had uh, many, many other planets up there just ringing these fiery, pre this fiery presence and confidence down. So where that leads me in terms of the feelings, the emotions that young women have for the Justin Biebers and the people up there on the stage is this is a man up there exemplifying the animus, this like sudden awakening of the animus, the unconscious masculine within the female mind and these enormous feelings of of jealousy and rage which is truly what women have under the surface as well as lust and passion and desire and ultimately if you really were to look and I'll put them here the the chart of Johnny Burrell in terms of his human design is extremely confident extremely present there's a lot happening which is him which is simply him all the time consistently he has consistent energy he is a manifesting generator and then you look at someone like me <laughs> with my chart being extremely open extremely able to read the other I saw him on stage and I felt him in me and this is a big thing to do with why this seems to happen in this direction women with men and not the other way around because what a woman feels <laughs> And I, I, I'm not dismissing uh, homosexual relationships, but any given relationship, whether that's two men, two women, a man and a woman, there's always going to be the more receptive and the more sort of dominant. But I discovered, of course, in that moment, I'm definitely heterosexual. And there was this, this feeling of wanting to be consumed, wanting to be filled with that. And because I was so receptive, even his image, his voice, the presence was enough to make me feel this is my own potential. Really, I was just feeling him and who he is and, <laughs> and what it's like to be him. But it also awakens this, yes, repressed unconscious masculine, but also the truer desire, the deeper desire to merge with another and not just another, but with the soulmate. And it's incredibly interesting to me that these sorts of uh, dynamics that happen within teenagers are so, so easily dismissed as being very, very, you know, just the weak heart of a, of a teenager when actually there's something so full, <laughs> full bodied. <laughs> and I was having these uh, visions come back to me of the experience uh, the experience of being a teenage girl, of being 14 years old. And just lying in my bed and being <laughs> more or less consumed by the universe. Just all of this energy flowing out of my fingers. And it was it was destructive. Because the creative potential was so strong. But there were no channels. Or I felt the channels to be very limited. Or I felt because of the, you know. It's, I am also now going to address the noughties in general. And how we are doing in terms of the sexual politics and why misogyny is is prevalent has a lot to do with that if to be a true woman to be a uh, to be female is to be receptive and therefore you have to let things in you have to let things penetrate you and that puts you into a position that feels weak not how it should be because it should be this wonderful flow in which the woman is sort of giving with this top part of her of her body you know the heart and the chest man is giving with the lower part and then it creates a kind of a channel like a circuit that is is this beautiful thing in in terms of heterosexual love making and just in terms of general interactions with people you end up creating a, a channel of energy so much of the time we are very very wounded in different areas and therefore it's very easy to lock into these kind of interactions in strange ways and oftentimes it's not received from here or there's a, a blocking in the throat specifically for women and 
instead of that awakening my potential within me it was awakening the rage and the desire and the kind of well I can't get that for myself I just have to try and <laughs> hunt this man <laughs> I have to try and like find myself a Johnny Burrell instead of becoming that which was evidently there within me otherwise it wouldn't have hurt so much and it was extremely painful and of course all these things start overlapping when you're that age all of the traumas all of the experiences enmesh into one thing and sometimes it's easy to put that label on a on a figure of unrequited love that you're not going to meet rather than addressing your own family trauma and dynamics and the reason I mentioned Lana Del Rey is the way this girl was responding to her really feels to me that this is some sort of wounding with the mother and a feeling of oh, just projecting all those feelings you wish that you could have with your mother onto, onto a female version of the same. But I, uh, given my, my experience, this was the, uh, the place I was at, was more to do with my father in that moment, so that was how it, it came about. So this is where I feel astrology can be so healing and reading the astrology charts of other people that you have once admired or felt hatred for or anything just to really analyse and feel into what it is about them that got your attention so strongly and triggered you so much. So I'll just talk a little bit about his his life and his chart. He was born in Sutton, raised in Muswell Hill in London until the age of 10 and then he moved to France for three years. He came back and all his friends were in a band, so he decided to start his own. And then he ran away from home um, and would go to to stay in the squats around London. Another thing which jumped out at me was uh, I heard in an interview he was talking about the Rainbow Centre, the uh, very big, amazing church squat that there was in the 90s where they used to have all these amazing free raves. And I, later in my days, as an eco-warrior, I got involved with exactly the same group who set those squats up and were doing other squats around London uh, 15 years later. So it was very interesting to... Because a, a main reason why I had dismissed him around after my huge outpouring of emotion towards him, I sort of shut him down thinking, oh, he's so mainstream. Then it comes around again that he was he came up more or less through the same the same strands the same soil as me. There are many similarities as well within the charts that I see are just some of the archetypes that he had developed that I wish to have developed within myself. So he started doing drugs very young and he was addicted to heroin from the age of 16 to 20. I mean that's extremely Aries you know why why not <laughs> that kind of and I had that feeling as a teenager just there was never a, a moment to breathe and and pause and I've got that moon in Aries and it's just just go for it there's there's no um, no time to think he said that at that time he could hear he could hear lead belly and clash as the same thing and he wanted to to bring across what he had learnt from music, from what he had heard to, to bring in a new sound, and he did. And he was friends with the the Libertines, and they wanted him to be part of the band, but of course he's independent, wanted to do his own thing, and came up by doing sets with Alabama 3, and then from there being able to form Razorlight and start the band, which then went on to have really sudden and unexpected success think it's a key thing mentioning his Uranus opposition that's happening now at 42. Many, many people you could talk about the success that they had at 42 because it is a pivotal moment when people either have their midlife crisis. Somehow it seems to be more men that lean this direction of having something big happen at 42. I've always felt that it's because the male mentality can sometimes be more... Uh, less receptive and more rigid to change and when Uranus comes along it's a big punch in the face by that point if you've not been listening to your Saturn return and the other uh, different things as they come around but for him it seems like a comeback is you know he seems healthy and happy and <laughs> good enough to be able to take the reins of this new opportunity that Uranus brings 
But of course, his Uranus Square happened when he was 21, and this is the young fame thing, the young success, sudden success out of nowhere, and and rising up uh, in his early 20s. And he was coming up at the time of the early 2000s when it was a really vicious, malicious time. And I say that thinking, well, previously just thinking, well, that was just my teenage years and there was a bitchiness in my school. But no, it was tabloid newspapers. It was really, really nasty headlines, really, really vicious comments and no holds barred, nothing, nothing to take care of anyone. Everyone was fodder for dissection and ridicule. And he was no exception. And he was quoted and misquoted, quoted out of context. And also, of course, he did say some like uh, garishly arrogant sounding stuff. And he was a figurehead for the male ego of the noughties. And there was a lot of criticism of that at a time when actually that was extremely celebrated. So if we look at his chart and the themes of the chart, he has a mutual reception between the sun in Aries and Mars in Leo. So there is this natural warring energy. Aries is a is a huge part of his chart and I don't have a time, a birth time for him. I've sent, <laughs> I've sent a message on Instagram to his brother trying to find out when he was born. Can't wait around to find out if he replies or if he even knows, but that would give more of an indication of the ruler of his chart, but we can already see that it's extremely Martian and warring. One thing I didn't mention before, I wanted to say when he was friends with the Libertines coming up with them and you compare him to Pete Doherty, this other pin-up that <laughs> every boy I ever met wanted to resemble and mimic in every possible way. And how recently he has come into to some sort of comeback of finally quitting hard drugs and settling down and having a more stable life and just wanting to contrast the Aries archetype and the Pisces archetype. Aries being this kind of demonized almost as much as a Scorpio or a Gemini, you know, like they're careless, they just do what they want, they, you know, they're hedonistic. Compared with the Pisces, the sweet, loving, you know, intimate, sensitive. Well, if you look at, I, I always say that Pisces is, is so mutable and so can be so easily <laughs> tainted and you really see this in these two there's also a, a, a similarity in the opiate crisis we have now compared to what was happening in the late 90s and 2000s with the prevalence of heroin but at least <laughs> back then you only had a handful of drugs to choose from now it's endless names of drugs with different numbers and letters but yes, Johnny Burrell went down that path, but he quit and he got himself out of it and he ended up doing far less damage to others. Whereas whenever I read the newspapers during the noughties, it was always another one of Pete Doherty's victims, someone else he he provided with drugs, someone else he let into his um, crazy drug party and destroyed. He destroyed the li life and reputation of our queen princess kate kate moss and it was a it was it's a reflection to me of the misunderstanding that pisces is always going to be this very sweet and angelic innocent thing when actually it's just a type of energy that can be so easily manipulated and so easily um led off track for so long <laughs> there's no end there's no end with a uh, pisces detour so the question that I w would be curious to find out is how seriously Johnny Borrell ever took his own ego. Because again, someone who's gone that far down into the darkness of addiction, sometimes they come out. Most of the ex-addicts that I know have a very good sense of humour and a very good sense of spirituality and a connection to something more. And the person he was painted as being was extremely arrogant and outrageously so. And I just wonder whether he took that seriously or if he was doing a spinal tap type cameo of what a rock star should be. Um, I don't know if we'll ever find out, but certainly these days he seems extremely normal. <laughs> a normal person.
I actually think it's the Aries that has been his saving grace and the Aries, the leadership quality that of the Aries that uh, stops anything else being able to come and take control. It's kind of being the in the dominion of a of yourself and that was very triggering for me being extremely mutable and, and easily led having someone so sort of confident in who they are and what they want to do um, brought up a lot of anger in me definitely and there's a sort of difference between being shameless and being unashamed and I think a lot of the quotations were just him not being ashamed and him just being confident in himself and that was always uh, pigeonholed as being extremely arrogant I say this now at the moment when men and to be a man is so derided and so de divisive and and gender is up for up for grabs and just very very diluted and laden with concepts and confusion whereas this was, was a time when to be a man you knew what a man was and the place for women during that moment there was a it always felt at that time that maybe the boys were allowed to have more fun. The girls were still having to live up to this sugar and spice and all things nice. And the boys were really snails, slugs and snails and puppy dogs tails. And that was the part of me that I wished I could have. But I, I, it's funny, I've put makeup on today for the first time in forever. And I used to wear it all the time as a teenager as this kind of, we have to, even if you're on it. <laughs> A terrible come down even if you're really hung over even if you're you're feeling crap you need to be your perfect self and this was reflected in the the women pinups of the time who were all completely perfect whilst the men were you know had holes in their arms and were sweating profusely <laughs> and they were allowed to be messy encouraged to even be ugly and that was not the same in reverse likewise with the women having this denied animus so too there are many men who have daddy issues and were possibly the ones writing some quite uh, flam inflammatory comments for the enemy magazine about him and saying uh, very very aggressive things sort of reflecting their own insecurities it's it's no surprise to me that the noughties would come back not only is there a sort of cycle as they say a 20 year rule but also the pendulum in the past was much more slow swinging and now we're at a stage where it's back forth back forth back forth going from like really feminist to really misogynistic and kind of trying to find that balance and at least nowadays the press has become much more democratic in that you if you're famous you have more of a control over your image your public image and what you put across and the experience of celebrity has become much more direct whereas you know i remember just having my space and just writing frantic comments <laughs> on the on the razor light fan page like i'm gonna die <laughs> just like the equivalent of if i could go to a beatles concert and just scream just like releasing all this stuff in the form of, of writing and just of course not not being able to own my own projection or see anything that was actually happening as I say there was this sort of Carly energy in being a teenage girl where it's just all hanging out you know flying out in all different directions and I just I just wish we could find a way to kind of help young people to channel that really creative energy in ways which are, are really beautiful rather than destructive or just rebellious for the sake of it because in the early 2000s there was a, a worship of the young expressive nihilistic male um, the self-destructive thing whereas now suicide in men is at an all-time high and there's the feeling that nobody cares and there's a side of the the feminine that has come out that is is sick that we really need to tune into which is like a a, a feeling of good die and it's it's a a part of consciousness that no one really wants to admit to but i see it very presently in people who in the past would have you know worshipped these same superstars as me who now really turn their back on the sex altogether so again looking back at his chart and what he has going on there's this really really powerful conjunction between Mars, Jupiter and the North Node. And Mars being his action, how he's going to take his action in life, the thing that gets him out of bed, spurs him on, 
gives him energy as fight fighting energy warring energy and then the north node 26 degrees of leo is this what is my purpose what is my direction where am i going and 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 why and this is aligned with his action so it's get up and go <laughs> and you hear this in all of his song lyrics as well which is why there's this beautiful light-hearted simplicity to a lot of the expression that resonated so well this pure energy and then you have Jupiter at zero degrees of Virgo, which means that it's not just chaotic, it's not just uh, pure vitality, it's actually something of a, a way of expanding through the detail, through the meticulousness of practicing, 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 and repetition, and making sure that he's got it right, and the perfectionism that comes with that. And then you have Saturn also in, in Virgo, this kind of restraint, this ability to kick the habit you know maybe you do these things when you're a teenager but to move on and then have a, a level of of control now with all of our charts nothing is so uh, clean cut and just because we have one of these qualities doesn't mean that it's the part that will always win out it really depends what is being triggered in your chart at the time and how much you've grown um, as to how what part of you is going to rule the day and win out on the day and with him if you look at his human design he is he does have a triple split which is when you have three different processes happening within your system which are not necessarily connected on their own you need to wait for a transit or better still to be with a group of people who will help activate you so he works incredibly well in crowds with lots of people but not necessarily in one-to-one -one relationships for long periods of time because he is a manifesting generator so he can go his own way he doesn't need anybody else in the long term but in the short term being around a variety of different people helps bring out and helps all of this energy to flow he does come of course from the uh pluto and libra generation so there is a a disdain for relationship and a kind of lovelessness that there was in the 90s and the 80s um a real war of the sexes and uh breaking down you know it's the time of for single mothers and it's all fine for single mothers and broken broken homes uh to exist and it's not, it's too much, it's too much pressure and just because a mother is amazing and can do that doesn't mean that they should and there should be more more community spirit, more love and more co, co-relating <laughs> just, just better communication and communication wasn't the key in the 80s and the 90s it was a dark time, a dark time for relationship and a dark time for sexual health so there's a sort of nihilism and, and a death to do with love which again comes across in a lot of the lyrics from the the early 2000s and you listen to it and you think well this is where i've come from now i understand <laughs> this is very very depressing and depressed in relation to like a, a real um pessimism in terms of what a re healthy relationship or the possibility of a healthy relationship from taking place then he's got a conjunction of uranus and the moon <laughs> in Scorpio so you remember I said yeah Aries is one of those signs that's pretty demonized well so you don't get more demonized than Scorpio and someone with a moon in Scorpio I've got a video about this placement and it's it's tough it's hard it's uh you're feeling everything really really deeply and taking things on board on a on a on a really f physical level within your body even if you can intellectualize yourself out of things it's something that's deep within your cells that needs to be felt and processed through and he's got it there in conjunction with uranus at this huge deep space planet for for change but being at 27 degrees of scorpio makes it a mature moon so there's a, a room for emotional intelligence at least over time his in, I keep jumping between astrology and human design but I often feel like I need to use both to get the fullest picture but he has this uh, role model quality to his human design which means his life is broken up into three stages you know making mistakes until the age of 28 28 to 50 you're settling into yourself and really establishing that that baseline and then after 50 you become a role model and I have high hopes for him, I really do because I think there's a lot of potential there especially um, I mean, uh, him being a front man was a natural thing that was always going to happen incredibly charismatic but also very dangerous with this level of volatility in the emotions and this level of um, 
sort of fire in a young man it's not going to make for the the happiest or most understanding type of character or or pin up but as he went forward and he was doing work with Zazu and in a band which was much looser and freer and having that opportunity to be in more of a jamming session uh, setting and a bit less of the um the focus of attention and someone who can just help kind of solidify something in the center that that made some incredible music it's really i really recommend you listen to it and that's a way to to evolve into that that role model because you've you've had that opportunity to shake down and shake off the the ego that's placed upon your shoulders wearing stupidly low t-shirts and having a a-list celebrity as a girlfriend and leaving the country as i can testify to leaving your home nation is hum humiliating <laughs> it really is it's it's a, a th thing to bring you to your knees because all of your references all of your all of the stuff i'm talking to you about now largely goes over the head of anyone i would speak to from spain but there's something very pervasive about the london ego <laughs> which meant it did actually reach out beyond the shores and it's, it is pecu a peculiarity to hear how much British music is played on the radio. I'm, I wouldn't be too surprised by all the American music being played, yeah, you know, but British music being played in Spain and when there are so many amazing Spanish bands but they just don't get the airtime in their own country it's a, it's a really strange one and it's, it's, a, it's a testament to the the scope of the London ego in particular but he got away he got away and he went to live in the Basque country and yeah there's their own their own type of ego going on over there and then there's also that attraction to darkness and the moon is often associated with your childhood self and who you are as a child and that kind of wanting to bring things up to the surface very triggering for parents not surprised if he was having problems with his mum and also the fact that his parents separated and having an absent father these kind of things are all very they make you feel stuff <laughs> so he's going to have that attraction to the darkness and that feeling with the darkness to do with um, the moon and then being able to dream big having Neptune in in Sagittarius and just having big dreams big hopes it's an expansion of whatever you might dream and and he, he's never seemed seemingly had any limits on himself and he didn't and, and that stepping down it's interesting you know between 28 and 50 you settle in to who you are and kind of leaving behind the celebrity status to be a lot more humble was was a choice not an automatic thing it was something within his dreams <laughs> that he wanted to do he wanted to get back to the roots and and the joy of making music and back into that alabama 3 style of things which i'm very familiar of i love that kind of environment where you just have a variety of musicians everybody's got something to contribute and it's like a cacoph cacophony it's like an or a rock orchestra of, of nonsense it's just fantastic and it's not so formulaic and structured it's very organic and then with mercury in pisces this is a very different way of thinking and this is something that's criticized in, in his way of communicating because it does veer off from one thing to another it's very uh thoughtful and even as a as an adult man in his late 30s he still was sort of communicating in a very boyish way you know very boyish features and very um kind of expression that that is youthful which is something that i really want to get across about the aries archetype that we don't value enough as as a society this really really joyful youthfulness um, my mum when i was i was enjoying myself and i was playing in a in age 30 as i as i almost am and she said well you know you are just like a child anyway and i was like okay <laughs> is that an insult and she's like well and i can see that's her own denied child within herself but there's this kind of idea that we need to grow up you know but you can hold on to these parts of yourself that are very free and and joyful and jovial that <laughs> exist in in that really open Pisces space so whilst he's not Pete Doherty he has got this this Pisces innocence about him in the way he thinks and the way he communicates and 
in the way he writes lyrics and the way he expresses himself that is mercury it's how you express and then you get to the the sun in aries 14 degrees just it's who he is and it, it harks back to that triple conjunction of uh all that Martian energy in the fire sign and having that fire in his in his belly, forward facing, like I I don't know his ascendant, but everything in his his eyes, his nose, his face is all coming at you. It's forward, like it's just ready to, to go, it's ready to run and it's very light hearted and uh, springy. It's spring, it's it's the spring in, in April, this is what it's all about. It's the birth of new life without thinking it's the fool's journey and then he's got Chiron in Taurus this wound around stability and around groundedness and the commitment and the the possibility of that with the nihilism of the early 2000s there was a kind of well what's the point there's no there's no values to have it's valueless where punk came in at a time of utter true desperation the noughties style of punk came in at a time of excess and still being pissed off you know so you know, that kind of spoiled child and the thing which the the millennial generation has sort of fought against is trying to be more open-hearted and more loving and more sensitive and more sweet and that gets criticized and there's something laid at the feet of the millennial as being too soft and too sappy but it's trying to regain the heart after shutting that down and kind of throwing that out with the bathwater. And then he has Venus in Gemini, so again, it's not going to be the person who's most committed or, or going to have a particularly stable relationship. It's more falling in love hard and fast and it's really fun and playful and jovial and, and again, something frustrating for the women who are trying to, to pin down that archetype and own it for themselves and have that within themselves. But as I've said, he's the manifesting generator. He's got that triple split of a different process going on up here, as in his sacral, as in his solar plexus. And it's like three different engines running, but not relating to each other. So he may comprehend something up here, but it's not quite filtered down through all of his systems. So he can initiate quickly, he can manifest his dreams, and he can accomplish a lot. And being in public places really helps. So this is another reason why he's this ultimate front man to be in a group because he has an excessive energy and really benefits from a variety of different people helping helping him gauge what's actually going on under the surface and he notably he said that he really liked anonymity he really loved the energy of all of that but then going out in his motorbike helmet in his leathers and being in the crowd after a gig feeling the energy and the excitement but without being a um, attacked for it. Well, I know for a fact that there were. A, I was not alone in my fascination, fixation, and obsession with him, and a lot of that feeling, especially at that moment of time, would have contained a huge amount of rage coming out of the female form, and also from men. So to be able to enjoy the energy of that, but not actually have to be um, bothered and tied down to the individual emotional projections coming out of everyone watching that must have been liberating which is something he can enjoy now as an adult man because people will care less <laughs> they won't project so much his ego is not so um flawed and the music will be better so i i often think it's sad when people have too much success too young because you don't have a chance to really develop yourself and in all of the necessary ways just because you have in one area doesn't mean you're necessarily ready in all the other ways and harks back to the likes of of brian jones and um other tragic losses and tragic losses of that time of course include amy winehouse and the the desire for perfection that she had but then the you, you were not allowed to have that um messiness as a woman and she was crucified for that essentially and not able to carry herself up and over that that particular hill and the other thing that has really carried him through other than the fact that he engaged in the excess when young so then was happy enough to become a bit more boring in older age was the fact that he lives without internet and he lives without a smartphone and can kind of get on and exist in a in a bubble of his own making and that enjoyment of 
of your own energy and honestly this is the best thing that I've discovered is how much I love being alone I love finding out who I am stripped back of, of anyone else and uh, and then you find yourself in a state where you're much more constantly able to be productive and to do things and to, to act and to embody these things and I've just bought myself a Fender guitar for my 30th birthday so I've finally gone full circle on this thing and can come back and start really getting into the music which was the thing that I admired the most and one of the things that was the most triggering and frustrating for me and after him of course then I had boyfriend after boyfriend who was a mu musician that I would stand on the sideline I would go to the gigs and just be like I want to do that I want to do that but there's a, a, a barrier for a variety of reasons to to feeling that I could engage with my my dreams and this is what Aries just doesn't need anyone's permission who was I waiting to allow me to do that myself so that was the lesson and that hopefully will close the chapter on my <laughs> my Johnny Burrell book that until recently he hadn't crossed my mind but then he pops up and it's so funny how just a face and a voice can be enough to trigger a, all of this untapped emotion to come to the surface and you think wow that was what was going on that period of time that black hole that kind of like hormone riddled <laughs> I was simultaneously bedridden and also out of the house 24-7 like climbing out of the window and just climbing up the walls and breaking things all the time <laughs> just just chaos and uh, yeah to, to bring that into loving harmony I'm always talking about how we need to like bring in these parts of ourselves that we've shamed and often that feels like the childhood up until the age of seven that's when a lot of the damage was done in terms of our perception of ourselves but it's good to spend some time with your teenage self and really just just marvel just marvel at the the chaos and the the uh the joy that can be found there especially when you kind of go there with hindsight and you you give that reassurance to yourself like it's really not that bad it's really not as drastic a situation as you may think yeah the last thing to say about him is that whilst his his chart is actually he has a huge amount of water going on and it is the water that is going to make us into the best musicians and it's the water that's going to make us not age <laughs> as fast it's water that keeps the flow going so there's there's and it's water that is feminine so there is no sort of saying that because he's a man he's a front man it's a man it's a masculine male thing no and there's plenty of examples of the women that, of women that have been able to do this and i can appreciate them in a far healthier way but it is also worth looking at the fact that his Mars is aspected 11 times. So whilst it's also in a conjunction with Jupiter and, and the North Node, it's also aspected by other planets that are constantly triggering it, constantly giving him this feeling of production. And, and it can be good to look at someone's chart like that and say, well, this is how they function. This is why they work this way. And this is why I don't. <laughs> I work in a different way. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a... It's like a, the program. What program have you got installed on your on your device? Your human, physi physiological, emotional, spiritual device. So, thank you so much for joining me. And please let me know if you'd like me to explore anyone else. This is an interesting period of time to address now. As there wasn't this, this kind of um, ability for reflection at the time and it was a key moment just before we moved into a place that was more where everyone had a voice where I could message Johnny Burrell's brother asking for a date of birth <laughs> so uh, thank you so much please have a look at the website ineffableelse.com if you'd like to have a reading of your own and follow me on Instagram thank you so much bye bye <laughs>